In this video, we're going to answer the question of whether an electric car can ever appeal to someone like me. A quick glance around this very YouTube channel will tell you that I'm a diesel guy. All three of my current 4x4s that feature on the channel feature big lusty diesel engines. Well, not so much the P38, that's diesel but it's not very lusty. For me, the things I love about diesel engines apply almost universally to all diesel engines. Great durability, economy and performance. As a diesel head, I even love the sounds they emit and the feeling of a turbo spooling up as you squeeze on the accelerator pedal. So when I rented this Polestar 2 recently on a trip back to the UK, it had a tall order on its plate. So why did I choose this Polestar as my first foray into the world of EVs? Well, if you cut me open and take a look inside, among other things you'll see the word Volvo written in there like a stick of rock. Despite not owning one currently, Volvos have always occupied a space in my heart. And although I know this technically isn't a Volvo, there's a very strong link there both in company parentage and looks, and for that it gets an immediate bonus point. But once you get over the initial excitement of the new and the unfamiliar, what is it actually like? Well, I had a week with it to find out. Now, despite only being the relatively lowly, long-range, single-motor version, the first major impression that the Polestar made on me was with its speed. It's quick. Not Tesla plaid rip your face off quick, but it's still quick. This recently updated version of the 2 is aided by the fact that it's now rear wheel drive as opposed to the front wheel drive of the earlier cars. So when you floor the throttle it hunkers down and puts that 220 kilowatts or 295 bhp down to the road with almost no drama. end long range dual motor car ups this to all wheel drive and 416 brake horsepower and there's even a performance model with 469 brake horsepower. I'd definitely love to give that one a go at some point but realistically for most people this long range single motor version is going to be more than adequate. Put it this way, there aren't going to be many other sensible four door family hatchbacks that can keep up with you when you stretch its legs a bit. So that's all as expected really. We know that electric cars are quick, but what is it like to drive? But first, a quick word from our channel sponsor Autodoc, who can help keep your existing car on the road. And I just want to take a minute to show you why you should be using Autodoc for your car parts too. If we load up the Autodoc app here, all you have to do is pop in your reg number and it'll only show you parts and accessories that fit your specific car. Once you've done that, you'll see there's a huge range of options to choose from for pretty much any part. For example, here on the P38, if I head into brake calipers, you'll see it asks me which caliper I need, front, rear, left or right, and then once I've selected that it will give me specific parts to suit. Another thing I love about the Autodoc app is this video section. These are generic tutorial videos but they're actually really handy and quick to get to the point, like this EGR cleaning one here. So go try out the app and don't forget you can use the code SAM to get 5% off your order. Right, back to the video. So this car is on the standard suspension, not the performance pack, and it's on the 19 inch wheels, which are the smallest size available on these cars. And I have to say, on these rutted and patched uh, South Kent roads, the ride is pretty harsh. These roads are particularly bad, but the Polestar really doesn't deal with them particularly well at all. You guys can probably hear as we're hitting the imperfections in the road, there's quite a few thumps and uh, knocks coming through the the frame of the car. Obviously because the car's an EV there's no engine noise to mask that so it kind of sounds worse than it would in a normal car I guess but yeah. If I could choose an 18 inch wheel on this car I certainly would and I would like the damping just to be a little bit softer edged just to take the edge off of these bumps and imperfections in the road. The trade-off for that of course is that it does stick to the road and there's no discernible body roll in the corners but once you get the Polestar back onto a smooth, higher speed road, the ride's actually surprisingly good. It still feels firm, but it seems to kind of waft a little bit better on this kind of road. So something that has excited me about the prospect of electric vehicles for quite a long time now is the prospect of increased refinement. 
I know it sounds a little bit boring coming from somebody who's supposedly a car enthusiast, uh, but you can kind of see in my car history, I've always coveted vehicles that are good at refinement, that do refinement really well. So I've had Lexus LS 400s, Jaguar XJs, Mercedes S-Classes, interspersed between all my Land Rovers and Range Rovers that I've owned over the years. And the reason that I love those cars so much, or part of the reason, is that they're so well refined and so quiet on the road. Um, and, all, and what that adds up to is a really relaxing drive, which is really important, especially when you're driving in the UK with a lot of traffic. So I was really keen to see how this electric Polestar, is, you know, it's kind of an executive kind of brand, how refined they managed to make it. And overall, I'm pretty impressed. Obviously being an EV, it has the major advantage of not having any engine or gearbox to make any uh, noise. Basically, that's one of the major sources of noise in a normal car, so it doesn't have that. And the only kind of noise you actually do get from the electric motor is kind of a muted whine at low speed, which is actually quite satisfying. But apart from that, refinement is generally really, really good. There's not much wind noise at all. The only thing you do hear, as I said before, is noise from the suspension thumping up and down. But yeah, as I said, generally really, really nice and quiet. And I can't overstate how nice it feels to cruise along a road like this without any drivetrain noise whatsoever, just serenely cruising along. Sometimes that is what you want from a car, you just want to get from A to B as quietly, comfortably, and in the most relaxed way possible. And the Polestar seems to be really good at that. So yeah, as I said, the handling of this car has been one of the nicest surprises. Um, looking at it on paper, you think a two ton, two plus ton saloon is going to feel like a big blamange on these kind of back roads. But um, sorry, motorcyclists. But somehow that Polestar racing heritage has found its way into this car, it seems, because it feels really, really confident in the corners. Um, doesn't seem to roll at all and just sticks to the road, basically. So this Polestar 2 is specced out pretty well and it has the pilot assist packaging, it's called, or possibly the pilot, the full pilot package, basically, which gives you adaptive cruise control, which I've got on now. And then it also has this lane keep function as well, which is a bit more than a lane assist, um, because it is actually actively steering the car between the lanes. But right now I'm basically just keeping a hand on the steering wheel, but the car is doing all of the work in terms of following this curve down the motorway. Um, and combined with the adaptive cruise control, that makes for really, really relaxing motorway cruising. The car is basically doing all the work. I'm just sat here, you know, keeping an eye on things basically. As we had a spare day down in Kent, we decided to go and take the Polestar to see where its food is made, to the bleak yet strangely alluring landscape of Dungeness. So that's where our electricity is coming from. Not entirely sure if it's still operational, I presume it is. It's Dungeness for anybody wondering. I thought, electric car, appropriate to come and see nuclear power station. And it turns out that Dungeness is actually a really strange place, really quite weird. I've lived in Kent for most of my life and never really been over to, Dun to Dungeness. Um, but as it turns out, it's very interesting and strange. I'll show you guys some of those shots now. In a strange way, I sort of felt the Polestar, with its minimalist Scandinavian looks and feel, fitted in strangely well in the exposed and stark landscape of Dungeness.
interior of the Polestar 2 seems generally really, really nice. Um, it's what I would describe probably as ascetic luxury. And what I mean by that is that it feels luxurious, but it doesn't feel extravagant or unnecessary. It actually reminds me quite a lot of the Volvo interiors of the good old days. And I'm talking about the old Volvo 940 and 740 and cars like that. Those cars had high quality interiors with good materials, but they weren't flashy. They were always comfortable, but not over the top. And that's what this feels like to me as well. And I quite like that about this car. It feels comfortable and high quality without feeling like it's trying too hard. And that's, to me, exactly what the interior should be. Some of the interior materials in here are a little bit questionable. I'm not sure about this kind of uh, textured hexagon shaped plastic, which feels a little bit scratchy. You guys can probably hear that. It uh, doesn't feel all that high quality. And there is a little bit of that kind of piano black, shiny black plastic in here as well, which shows marks and scratches way too easily. So I'll probably try and uh, spec that out of the car if i could order one without it that would be ideal another thing volvo has always been really really good at is seats and the polestar again is no exception here uh, the front two seats here very very comfortable great uh, bolstering as you can see on the sides here which is pl plenty for uh, a road going car um hold you in really nicely and excellent lumbar support as well you've got proper proper lumbar adjustable lumbar at the bottom there as well so yeah very comfy so stepping into the back here Reasonably easy access. And then once I'm in, not too bad. I mean, you can see my head's fairly close to the roof there. I'm six foot tall. Um, I, my head is actually touching the, the roof there. Maybe it's just my hair a little bit, but yeah, not, not a huge amount of headroom in the back. And then in terms of leg room, see this, I'm sitting behind my own driving position, six foot, as I said, uh, my knees, do clear the seat, but there's not a huge amount of room. My feet are underneath the seat there. So yeah, not huge. We've got a little armrest in the middle there, cup holders as well. And I believe there's a ski hatch through to the boot here as well, which is good. And I think the rear seats do actually fold down as well, which is nice because it is a hatchback at the end of the day. So that's gonna make this quite practical for things like carrying furniture around and tips and stuff like that, which we always seem to be doing with our cars. So yeah, overall pretty nice. So one thing that is pretty nice to see is that even though this car has the basic stereo system, so it's just an eight speaker, uh, non-branded uh, stereo, so fairly basic, it does actually have a proper equalizer. I say proper, it's got five bands. So at the very least, you can adjust uh, your 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 1K, 3K and 10K bands uh, to try and adjust the sound to your liking. I've done that here, just boosted the bass a little bit and the treble, and it seems to be sounding pretty good overall. I have to say though, if I was ordering one of these cars myself, which I'm seriously thinking about, I would definitely be ordering the plus pack for the car, which gives you the Harman Kardon 13 speaker plus subwoofer surround system um, and an even better equalizer on there as well, like a proper, I think it's a 10, a 10 band equalizer. So yeah, proper adjustability and customizability. And it's also supposed to sound pretty awesome as well. Volvo, again, do sound systems very, very well, which is another reason why I love them. So yeah, as you guys can probably tell, I've been pretty impressed by the Polestar 2. Ever since I first saw these cars appearing on the test track at Myra at my old job, I've always wanted to drive one and try it out and see what it looks like. I'm a big fan of Volvo, um, so naturally I always wanted to try their big, their new baby, their, their Polestar brand. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm very impressed. My biggest criticism though, and the reason that I probably won't end up ordering one, is this. Why only do it in a hatchback shape when Volvo have always been so good at doing estate cars? I know it's not a Volvo before somebody corrects me, but Polestar, why couldn't you have done this car with an estate, or a, what do they call it, a shooting brake format? This car with its chunky kind of styling, I think would have looked amazing as an estate. Look at the Volvo V60. Volvo know how to do estates very, very well. And I just think that this car with all of its power and sophistication and the way it drives on the road and all the technology would be amazing with the practicality of an estate car. For me, that's a big letdown. And yeah, I think Volvo missing out on a big market in the UK, especially where we love estate cars, where they could have made a very, very cool EV estate. But yeah, as it stands though, at least it's a hatchback, so it's not completely useless. But uh, yeah, as I say, I would have loved to see that practical version. The Polestar 3, which is a small SUV, is meant to be coming out in the next few months, um, which will be more practical than this probably, but 
still, yeah, a proper estate car, EV, that would have been cool, you have to admit. There aren't many cars these days, new ones that is, that make me stop and look twice at them or stop and look back when I've parked the car when I'm walking away. But the Polestar 2 definitely is one of those. I love the way it looks. I've loved basically all of Volvo's newer models that they've started making. I think the styling looks fantastic. Um, this is obviously not a Volvo, but very clearly borrows from Volvo in the styling department. Uh, you've got the Thor's hammer headlights there at the front, which look fantastic. Um, the strong shoulder line along the, along the side of the car there with the exaggerated butch shoulders sticking out. That's a very Volvo feature. And overall, the kind of boxy square um, nature of the Pulsar 2, uh, to me, just looks really, really appealing to the eye. Now, this is the first EV that I've driven, but as you guys can probably tell, I'm pretty impressed. I would like to drive a Tesla Model 3, which is this car's probably most serious competitor, um, and the one that has probably the biggest market share. But I have to say, the Tesla would have to be extremely good to be better than this. And even with its most recent facelift, I still prefer the looks of the Polestar 2 and the feel as well. This, to me, has got a much more desirable, Scandi cool kind of look going on, whereas the Tesla, I think, has a little bit of an image problem um, compared with something as cool as this, anyway. Would I buy one, though? That's the question. These cars, like a lot of EVs around the world, seem to be depreciating pretty hard in their first two or three years. Um, three years later, after buying one of these, you probably only expect to get around half or less of your money back, um, which is pretty painful. But that does mean that there are quite a lot of tempting two or three year old cars on the market. Remember this came out in 2020. That seemed to offer pretty good value when you think about it. The only caveat to that and the reason why you might want a newer one is that earlier cars with a single motor were front wheel drive. And I just don't think that is a great uh, setup for a car like this with so much torque from that electric motor. I can't, I can't think that they handle very nicely at all. This one being 2024 has the rear wheel drive on the single motor. Um, so yeah, handles nicely, puts the power down really well. If though, like me, you'd probably be looking at a dual motor one, then the earlier cars make a lot of sense. But yeah, overall, I have loved my experience over the last few days driving this Polestar around, and it has actually changed my perspective a little bit in terms of EVs in the world of electric cars. So yeah, strong praise coming from a diesel Land Rover loving uh, petrol head. Hmm, much thinking to be done. And the Polestar wasn't done impressing me yet. On our early morning cruise back to the airport, we got a demo of the Matrix LED headlights in action, carving chunks of darkness out for other road users. Pretty awesome. This technology has obviously been around for a while now, but it seemed to work really well on the Polestar, and it's quite impressive that it's available on a car at this relatively modest price point. So, although it's definitely not perfect, the Polestar 2 has given me hope for the future of cars. Hope that even if we do end up all having to go down this EV path, there still will be fun and aesthetically pleasing vehicles around like this one. Personally, I think I'll keep an eye on the used market for a while and see if any bargains come up, but unless Polestar releases that estate or sport wagon version that I was talking about, I'll probably be holding off for now. But that's all for this video guys, I'd love to hear what you think of Polestar and EVs in general down in the comments below, and remember to show your support for the channel by hitting that like button if you enjoyed this type of content. Don't forget to check out the Autodoc app and get your 5% off using our code, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!